Welcome to part three of Knut's top Sibelius tips. In this episode, we're going to be looking at ways you can speed up or otherwise improve the arranging and the arranging process. In the previous episode, we talked about sort of navigational stuff or, you know, sort of functionality in the workspace that doesn't really involve the actual arranging. So be sure to check it out if you haven't already. And uh, <laughs> I made a bit of an uh, embarrassing mistake in the previous episode. Uh, when I'm talking about the key commands, I keep talking about the option key. And when I say option, the key I'm actually talking about is the command key. And when I say alt, that is what, what's actually known as the option key. And you might go like, oh, but Knut, the command key says command right, like, right on it. It says command. And, and yes, you're completely correct. It does say command on the command key. Problem is, I actually use um, a, a Windows keyboard when I arrange, because uh, it has a keypad, which I need. Uh, and on this keyboard, it's just a Windows key. And so um, for some reason, I just, I've always referred to the option key as the alt key, because that, that's what it says, even though it sort of makes sense because alternative is just another word for option, isn't it? But yeah, I did actually use the correct symbol for the command key. So whenever I show the key commands on the screen, I am in fact showing the command symbol. So just, uh, you know, look at this, look at what's written and don't listen to me talking about the option key because the option key uh, in that video is supposed to be the command key. Anyway, let's get on with this video, uh, which is all about sort of speeding up or otherwise improving the arranging process. Tip number one for arranging faster and better in Sibelius. Use the arrange function. Arrange is sort of an intelligent copy and paste. <laughs> in fact, that's what Sibelius calls it. It calls it an intelligent copy and paste. If you're arranging something like block harmonies and you're a piano player like me, then it's actually a lot more useful for you to write it all out on one staff because that's, uh, you can kind of see it all very clearly. If you were to write in every voice individually, that would take a long time. But you can in fact just write it all on one single stuff and then um, copy it out to the other staves using arrange. I'll show you exactly how this works. So I've got this line here that I want to spread out on my three parts. I've already voiced it out on one staff and now if I didn't have the arrange function I'd have to painstakingly write in each of these on each staff. Fortunately there's a shortcut. So if I select what I have like so, and cut it out, then um, mark up where I want it. So I want to make sure that it starts on B2 here, like so. You just have to mark up the staves where the voices are going, like so. And then I use arrange. And you get this window, arrange styles. I've never encountered a situation where standard arrangement didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I just say stick with that. I mean, I'm sure these others have some sort of use, but I've just not been able to find it. So just stick with standard arrangement um, unless you for some reason need the others and just press OK. And bang, it's all been written out exactly the way I want it. Uh, now what arrange can do is it can change the uh, octave where lines are placed. So for instance, sometimes in pop music, the soprano lines can go to sort of C, B. Yeah, I've also seen them go down to A. Um, that's common for pop music. Uh, Sibelius doesn't like that, and so it's going to stick it up the octave um, to make it fit the ranges that it thinks a soprano should sing in. So make sure you look over them afterwards to make sure that they're all sitting in the right place. It looks to me like these are all sitting in the right place. And yeah, that's how easy it is. Tip number two, learn to write in the coders correctly. If you don't know, coders are like the little bits at the end of the song. It literally means tail. And you'll see something that says DS al coda, and then you go back to a symbol, and then you go to the bit where it says to coda, and then you go to coda. Sibelius can do all of this for you, and it can play it back, but it's a little bit fiddly. Um, you want to make sure that your coders are very clear. So I'm going to show you how to do it uh, and to avoid any sort of common problems that I've been faced with when doing my coders. 
So I've got uh, an arrangement here that needs a coda, or I've decided that I'm going to use a coda on it. Um, so from here, I want to go back to a place further back in the score. Um, there, letter B. That's where I want to go back to. So that's where I've got to stick the sign. So you go, so right click, text, other system text, repeat. Then you right click and you select that one. It's the one that has um, um, a key command, essentially. And then it always comes in super tiny, so you gotta make it big. I usually make it about 20 here. Like, uh, signs and coder stuff can never be big enough. People will not find them unless they're like right in your face. It's just it's some sort of psychological thing for, for, for musicians. Yeah, it's right there now. And the place I wanted to go to Coda um, um, is maybe around here. Yeah, I think this will be the place. So right click, text, other system text. Oops. Other system text, repeat to Coda. Then you stick it there. Now, you might be tempted to put um, you go in this, you right click, you might be tempted to use this symbol. Yes, technically that is correct, but for some reason, and I don't know why this hasn't been addressed yet in Sibelius, it doesn't understand that symbol. So it won't play it back the way it should. Um, it's really weird because, I mean, that symbol is commonly used for Coda, but for some reason Sibelius just doesn't understand that symbol. At least not with the current version I am using. Let's, uh, just to future proof myself. Can you please show me? Oh, so it's not showing me. I'm using Sibelius uh, 10. I forget which which um, revision it is. But yeah, I mean, I, I'll assume this might be fixed in a later version. But yeah, at the moment, you just got to write coder, not use the symbol. Otherwise, Sibelius will not play it back correctly. All right, let's go over to where I want. So that's not here. Yeah, here. So you want to, to make it look nice, put a double bar line where you want it to jump back to Coda and then go into layout and select split system. There. This will give, I mean, technically you can just write in the instruction, but this makes it super clear to whoever's reading the music that, ah, there is something, there is a, a break in the music here. So uh, there is something unusual about the structure. I don't just read on, I have to follow an instruction. Then right click, text, other system text, repeat. In this case, DS al coda, dal segno al coda. And you stick it at the end there. Now Sibelius knows, right, get to that point, back to the sign, which it understands, it understands the sign. Then um, it goes to two coda. And then what I usually do is I just copy this text, stick it over here, and just remove everything before Coda and write it in. Again, you you know, you know in real life, you would use the Coda symbol, which is the circle with a cross in it. Sibelius doesn't understand that, so you need to write Coda. But I mean, that's completely fine. And yeah, that is how you do the Coda correctly. Um, normally, if you go into the in the normal layout view, you would want to break system here as well. Um, see, it's done it automatically. And then this then is indented slightly. Again, it's sort of a visual cue to the performers that, okay, so this is slightly in, and then they might spot that text. You can make it bigger if you want. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to make an encoder. Tip number three about arranging faster and better in Sibelius. Add an extra staff if you're splitting instruments into several groups. Um, the way I see people divide instruments sometimes is that suddenly there'll be a new staff popping up and it's not always clear when the instruments should divide. It's not really indicated when they should uh, and also when they maybe go back into one staff. Uh, it is, I mean, even knowing how to do it, it is a little bit fiddly. 
but you can use certain um, symbols and stuff in Sibelius to make it clear and make it look as nice as possible. I'll show you how I do this. Uh, it's especially useful for choral music because choral music does tend to divide quite a lot. So I'll show you how to split the sections using an empty score, as it can get a little bit confusing if there's a lot of elements around. But let's imagine that uh, the sopranos are singing something on this first line, and then I want them to split into two separate staves down here. In order to do this, I have to add a separate soprano staff. Um, I think the best way to do this is if you go into the instrument panel, uh, that'll be... Um, actually, I always use the key command. Let's see if I can find it up here. Um, instruments. Uh, there we go. Add remove instruments. Key command I. Boom. And you select the soprano stuff over here, and you use this option here, extra staff. And uh, just stick one below there. And notice how they get labeled as soprano A and soprano B. You just press OK. And now there is two staves as part of the same instrument. Notice that there is this brace here to show you that these instruments belong together. So really, you don't need to uh, put in a whole lot of text here because this brace will be uh, a visual cue to the singers that, oh, there is uh, another instrument coming in here. Now, I, as I said, you don't um, need, you wouldn't need this stuff except when the instruments split. So I can just go hide it here. So I select these, uh, go into uh, layout, hide empty staves. There's a key command, but I don't think I've ever used it because I don't use that feature very often. We just select that and it disappears. And there's this dashed line here to indicate that there's a hidden instrument. However, it's not hidden down here. You wanna make sure that uh, this uh, extra staff is hidden whenever it's not used. Uh, this is something you will sort out when you do the layout. So while you're still arranging the song, don't worry about it. Um, but so let's say that I, I have finished my, you know, my beautiful song. Just look at it. Isn't it just wonderfully well written? Um, and I only need to split them for this part here. So that means I got to indicate to the singers that at the end of this line, they're going to be splitting. So you use a symbol called a choral divide arrow. You find that by going into Notation, Symbols, and click this little arrow here, and this will open up the Symbols panel. You can also use the key command Z for Zimbal. And the Coral Divide arrow is listed right here at the top. Coral Divide arrow. Select that and just stick it there. And that will show the singers that, aha, uh -huh, we're about to split into two parts. So they will then... Uh, if they're using their brains, <laughs> they will then uh, look at the appropriate staff. So S1 will do the top one and S2 will do the bottom one. And then let's say at the end of this one, they are going to be merging back into one staff. So you use the same, go into the symbol panel, so Z. And you want to use these arrow up and down. So uh, the down one goes for the soprano one part. Oh, it just appeared up here. Uh, just stick it down there. Just stick it at the top there, pointing down. And then you do... Uh, sort of the reverse for the bottom one, like so. And now these will then give the singers a cue that, aha, we're merging back into one staff. And then naturally you want to make sure that the uh, secondary staff is hidden when they re-emerge. And yeah, it is a little bit fiddly, but you will uh, this will be very clear to the singers when they're reading. So they'll know uh, that they're splitting here. So they're splitting into these two parts. Then they, em then they merge back into one part here. And yeah, always do make sure that these uh, extra staves are hidden when you don't need them. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a workaround solution, but it is really the only way you can do it because you will need an additional staff to write separate lines for them. So those are three tips for improving your arranging, either by speeding it up or by just making it look nicer. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about samples and how you can best use samples while you're arranging. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It always makes me really happy when new people subscribe. Leave me comments if you have any questions and be sure to share this video with your friends if you think they'll find it useful. And I'll see you next week. No. Subscribe.